Good day, it's Tony Fortunato from the technology firm. Today we're going to look at iPerf and we're going to do a quick start using Microsoft Windows. Enjoy! What is iPerf and why would we use it? iPerf can be used for the following tasks. We can try to determine or figure out how much bandwidth two stations can generate. You'll see later on in this presentation I take two laptops with a crossover cable and try to figure out the bandwidth I can get before I introduce them into the network. We can also change the TCP or UDP port numbers if I'd like to test port based packet or bandwidth shaping, maybe test an access list or some kind of filter. I can document the effects of layer one issues like noise, half full duplex mismatches, bad cabling, all that good stuff. We can also illustrate the impact of tasks that rob bandwidth. Maybe somebody's doing a backup, ghost reimaging, batch processing. We can also document UDP versus TCP performance. Sometimes we've got a choice and people ask me which is better. Since your hard drive doesn't come into play when we do these tests, drive latency is not an issue and cannot be factored into this throughput test. If you'd like to use your hard drive, then we can use iPerf and tell it to use a file. iPerf is available on SourceForge, obviously. It's a portable application, so no installation is required. We can just keep it on our USB key. Client and server use the same software, and that's very, very good. We can keep that same little USB key with us, copy the software onto a client or a server, not having to keep track of special software. It's just a configuration parameter. Of course, it runs on multiple operating systems, such as Linux, Mac, good old OpenBSD, and the like. The syntax screen is right here. You can print this off, maybe keep it up on your wall, maybe bring it to a party. Running iPerf from Vista or Windows 7. I found out the hard way that um, it doesn't really work all that well with my default configuration and I got this OpenCS Manager failed access is denied message. To fix that all I had to do was make sure when I ran the command prompt that I ran it as an administrator. As soon as I did that everything cleared up. Here's a sample of an iPerf upload. We've got the client here and he's got an iperf-c and then the server IP. Meanwhile the server has been set up ahead of time with iperf-s. So this server configuration would be done first and then secondly we would do the client command. In this example because the client is only doing a dash c it is an upload and you can see that here on the bottom left hand corner of the screen that's what the client typed in and that was the results and on the right hand side we can see the results from the server side as well. In this example I did an upload and a download so the clients got the same command as before only this time we've added a dash r so that I tell people the easy way to remember that is dash r means reverse so go up and then reverse and come back down. Again you'll see on the left hand side we've got the results and there's going to be two numbers we're looking at. In this case, 11.4 megabits per second was the upload, and 13.5 megabits per second was the download. And similar numbers will be reflected on the server side as well. Good old window size. People think that the iPerf window size parameter changes the TCP window size in your driver. Not true. It's an application window size or a read or a write block size if you'd like to remember it that way. The default is 8K so in this particular example I used Wireshark to just validate that 8K meant the application layer stuff not necessarily the TCP driver settings. I find that we can change this window size or this application block size when we're trying to emulate application block sizes and when we're traversing high latent lengths we can get more throughput out of that by keeping the data going. Here's a sample where we change the dash W or the window value on two brand new laptops and we use the default 8760 on both ends to start and you can see the throughput that we had on all three tests varied from 321 megabits per second all the way up to 761 by simply changing that application block size or window size. Now we're moving on to UDP. People like to use UDP and they don't know it but they are. All voice and video and some latent sensitive applications are UDP based so it'd be kinda nice to use iPerf to do a simulation of UDP over your network. Again we can use different port numbers if you do have policy based routing or some kind of packet shaping out there but it's just a good way to test uh, packet loss and packet latency. 
couple of tricks I like to use. I do a little DOS batch file for all the old people in the audience, and we write a simple little batch file that will echo dates and times along with results to a text file. So now I can just put that in a Microsoft scheduler. I can let the thing run maybe every half hour, hour while I'm troubleshooting, and it gives me an idea of throughput through various times of the day. That's it. So that's the iPerf training quick start. And I'm Tony Fortunato, and thank you very much. Have a good day. Bye for now.